I found this article that I thought was really interesting and it's entitled eight ways to make a strong decision together. And I was looking it up <clears throat> because sometimes in marriages, it's kind of hard to make decisions together, especially I find when you have couples who maybe got together later in life and they're like already used to like doing what they want to do, kind of moving the way they want to move, living their life the way they kind of want to. Oops. And now they find themselves having to share their lives with somebody else. And then it's like, okay, when it's time, you know, when everything is all good and we're having fun and we're doing this and doing that, it's cool. But then when it comes time to make big decisions for like the household, sometimes that could be an issue. So I found this and I thought it was really interesting. So they give eight ways, again, to make a strong decision together. And this is by Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. Um, and it was published July 28th, uh, 2015. And this site is Symbis, S-Y-M-B-I-S. I'll put all that information down in the description um, just to cite it in case anybody wants to go and see. I'll put the link. So the first way, obviously, I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to read the eight ways just to share because I thought that they were very... This is some very good advice, and I think I, I think it's advice that probably should be used. However, I'm interested to know if any of you have any advice that maybe is not given here. So let's start. So number one, be open to your spouse's stance. I think that's important. Again, a lot of times I feel like when two people, especially when you have two strong personalities, they come together and sometimes you're so busy talking, you're not listening. And you know how, you know, if anybody's ever had any therapy or anything, or just when you've talked to people, maybe life coach or something like that, or if you've listened to different life coaches like Iyanla Van San or people like that, it's, you know, hey, you always don't listen to respond, just listen. A lot of times people, they're listening, but they're only listening because they're ready to jump in and get right back to what they were trying to say and to prove their point. Instead of honestly sitting and hearing what your spouse has to say and giving it an opportunity, I think, to sink in so that you guys can have a, um, a conversation that's based on productivity because it is so unproductive when both people are talking, but nobody's listening. And you find at the end of that conversation, you've got nowhere and you've got nothing out of it but some damn frustration. So I think that's great. Be open to your spouse's stance. The next one, be honest about your feelings. And here's the thing. <clears throat> Hopefully and prayerfully, you're with a partner that you can be honest with. Now, here's my thing about honesty. I think that's always the best policy. And I can't stand a liar. I can't stand somebody who wants to just make a point. And in order to make that point, they'll say whatever, whether it's true or not, whether there's any real validity to it or not. That burns my biscuits. And it's obvious when somebody's doing it. And the crazy part is a lot of times the person that's doing it they don't realize how obvious it is and how frustrating how frustrating that is for the other person. Um, so I feel like both people always need to be able to feel like they can be honest, but also too within that honesty, as long as you're being respectful. And they don't mention that here. Well, they might mention it in the paragraph part, but again, I'm not trying to hold you too long. So I don't want to read this whole article word for word. Um, I'm just going off of the tips and then putting my own little, you know, thoughts into it. And please, again, drop down in the description, like, share, subscribe, but also comment and let me know what you guys think. But I do think that um, being honest about your feelings is important because if we're going to make a decision, you can't feel scared to say how you really feel because now we're making we're not making the decision based on how both people honestly feel. And so it's gonna not it's not gonna end up being a good decision because somebody was untruthful or somebody didn't feel like they could share their honest opinion about something. So I do agree. I think both both people should be honest about their feelings. Examine the pros and cons. That's number three. I think that's awesome. And I think that's a good way to not have an argument. Like, let's just sit down. Let's not worry right now. Let's not worry about what you think. 
or what I think necessarily, let's just go, let's write it down. This is the decision we're trying to make. Here are the, this side is the, of the paper are the pros. This side of the paper, these are the cons. And let's talk about the pros and cons together. And let's just brainstorm, just throw it out. What, what, is a, what is a con that you think? Even if the other person doesn't think it's a con, write it down. A pro. I might think something is a pro. The other person might think it's no, it's, that's a con. Okay, well, guess what? We'll put that on both sides and let's discuss it. Because two different people who have lived different lives or who think differently, even though you have a lot in common, obviously, because you're married, but everybody who has had any type of premarital counseling, I know we learned in our premarital counseling, and I say it all the time, you marry your opposite. So because of that, <laughs> which will probably be another video, because of that, I mean, even though you got a lot in common, you have a lot of things that are not in common, which to me is another reason why you need to definitely write down the pros and cons. Um, number four, consider the long-term effects. I agree, because remember, we're talking about eight ways to make big decisions. Eight ways to make a strong decision, well, a strong decision together. So, number again, number four is consider the long-term effects. I totally agree, because that makes a difference. How is this going to affect the family? How is this going to affect the finances long term? How is this going to affect, and I and I say, I'll add my own little two cents, positively and or negatively. Again, get that piece of paper out. After we write those pros and cons down, let's write. How do you feel about um, how this is going to affect our family in the long run? positive or negative and then same thing with the other person i think that that sparks another great conversation in order to lead you guys both in the right direction so so far i'm loving this article y'all number five remember there are eight ways so number five find ways to compromise i totally agree about this it's so disheartening when you are, and this is goes for any any relationship, when you're in like a situation where it's just this standstill and nobody's willing to budge, nobody's willing to say, okay, even if we have to agree to disagree, how can we come to a compromise? How can we end this? Because if we both love each other, we both want the best for the family. Okay, how can how can we do this or make this decision where you're happy and I'm happy or where you feel like you getting a little bit of what you want and I'm getting a little bit of what, what I want because that's the only fair thing. If you're going to be together, that relationship and that marriage is not going to last long if one person is always feeling like they have the short end of the stick or one person is always feeling like they're losing. So that's why it's just so important. All these things, doing all these things are so important to just make sure everybody's taken care of because at the end of the day, that should be what both people want. I know for me, I don't want to always get my way. That's not what a relationship is about. And I feel like if you live your life that way with each other day to day, where you're not always making selfish decisions or decisions based off of what you think is best for the family, but you're not speaking to the other family. You just doing what you think is best without speaking with, with whomever else you're with. That's not the way to go. And that's not going to yield positive results because that other person is going to always feel like even though you're saying oh, I'm doing this for the family, this is for the family. Well, if it's truly for the family, why is the other person feeling like they're on the outskirts? Why is the other person feeling like they're not, they don't really have a dog in the fight? They don't really have um, a, a part in the decision. Why do they feel like the decision is basically already made and they have to kind of just go along with it? That, that, then that means you're not doing it for the family. You're doing it for you, but it makes you feel better by saying you're doing it for the family. So always find ways to compromise so that your partner, because again, if you want that relationship to last, that partner can't always feel like we're in a partnership, but my partner is always doing what they want to do making the decision that they want to make and they're not considering me or or the whole family or the whole household that ain't gonna last look that ain't hot 
Number six, pray about it together. Let me say that loud. Pray about it together. I think that is so important. And I think that that is one thing that is missing in a lot of relationships is praying together. And, and praying from a standpoint of authenticity. Well, another thing I don't like is fake stuff. I can't stand fake. If you, and, that, and here's the thing. Don't pray if it ain't sincere. Because I can pray on my own. So I will say this to anybody. If you're in a relationship with somebody or a marriage with somebody, the prayers have to be uh, full of sincerity. If it's not, then there's no point in doing it. Just pray by yourself, child. And just and pray that things get better. And, and pray that the Lord falls upon your partner. But if the two of you are truly, truly have a heart for you know, a higher being, something higher than yourself. For for me, it's God. But, you know, there might be others watching where it's something else. But whatever that thing is, I think it's important for if two people are going to be joined together and married, that they both believe the same thing. Now, if you don't, that can happen. One person can be faking it sometimes, which I don't think is cool at all, but it all comes out in the wash. That's one thing. Because one thing about fake, fake don't last long. And one thing about real, real recognize fake and going to call it out every time. So it can only last for so long. So I definitely say if you can pray together, but if you're in a situation where y'all not at that together part yet, at the very least, you pray and this goes for my men too. This is I'm not only talking to women, I'm talking to whomever has a heart, an open heart and mind to listen to what I'm saying right now. That's who I'm speaking to. And so I feel like definitely pray together, but until you can get to that point, definitely pray on your own and something great will happen. Number seven, dig deep. Now, I don't know what they mean by this, so I'm going to read this. Pay close attention to your gut feelings as you and your spouse approach various opportunities for decision making. If the idea of a certain choice creates anxiety or apprehension, pay attention to it. Examine it and ask questions to see if you can get to the bottom of its cause. Discuss your gut feelings with each other. Perhaps you can calm whatever fears or discomforts you're having, or maybe you can use them to eliminate unsatisfactory options instead. I love it. I love it, and I couldn't have said it better. And the next part says, even if you don't level with your spouse's gut instinct, take it seriously. If something about an upcoming decision gives you or your, part of your, or your spouse pause, don't ignore your intuition or your spouse's. And I agree with that. But then here's another thing. We got to come with honesty. So the partner, be honest. Don't act like you got a gut feeling about something or you don't or you have this intuition or this sneaky feeling because you know that your your other spouse is, is going to want to listen to that and kind of not ignore it because you shouldn't ignore that. Because I do feel like when something when it's our inter intuition coming into play, that's also God nugging at you, too. But again, not everybody believes in God and we got a lot of fakes out here and we got a lot of people who are insincere, even within their relationships, because they're insincere with themselves. And that's the sad part. And so if they're insincere with themselves, they're going to be insincere with you. Um, so I definitely agree to listening to your intuition and to your spouse's intuition. If somebody has a feeling, but also to spouses, be honest. Don't say, oh, I got a feeling about this just because you know your spouse is going to be like, oh, okay, well then maybe we need to, you know, da, 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 just so that you can get your way. That's manipulative. And that's not what this article is talking about. And that is not the way to go. Manipulation is never good in a relationship. And if you love somebody, you shouldn't want to manipulate them. But let's move on. And last but not least, least seek genuine agreement baby this be my thing don't be arguing for the sake of arguing that gets a couple nowhere and i just feel like when you really love each other 
you should want to come to some type of agreement. You should not want to be going back and forth and you should not want to be worried about who's right. And I feel like that is where each person in that relationship is responsible for their own self-work. And to me, that's where self-work comes in. If you find yourself always having to be right, always having to have the last laugh, always talking over your partner, always having a back and forth, you know, always want to have a debate. There's something that's within you that you need to be looking at and trying to fix. And if it takes talking to a therapist, please do that. Again, if your relationship is important to you, then you need to be always working on yourself. A marriage is about is not about what you should what you can get out of it. It's about what you bring to it. And that's why a lot of marriages don't last because everybody's trying to worry about what they can get out of something. And if you're more worried about what you can give and you've married a partner that is doing the same thing, and let's just say that wasn't your thought process at first because you just had some things up in there that you needed to work out. But at some point in your marriage, that should be a conversation. Hey, we're on the same team. I'm not against you. I don't feel like you're against me. You know, we're doing whatever together. We're we're in business together or we're raising kids together or, um, you know, we're living together. Whatever it is that you're doing together, you're sharing your life with each other. And whatever that entails, whether it's parenthood or or business or um, or just all of the above, then it's no need for all of that. It's no need to be right. It's no need for all the back and forth. So if that's the case, then you should always be seeking a genuine agreement. Like, don't just get into it to be arguing and going back and forth. Let's see what the article says, but that's that's what I take from it. And that's how I feel about it. If at all possible, work diligently to come to a real agreement. One you both feel comfortable with. And that kind of goes back to... Um, the fine uh, number five, find ways to compromise. That goes hand in hand. Um, avoid forcing your spouse to agree to anything by means of ultimatums, manipulation, coercion, or any other underhanded methods. Let me say that again. Avoid forcing your spouse to agree to anything by means of ultimatums, manipulation, coercion, or any underhanded methods. If you want to strengthen the relationship you have, invest the time and effort it takes to truly reach your decisions as a team. Whoever wrote this is genius. They need to write a book. If they wrote a book, I'd buy it. Let's go. I mean, I, I couldn't have said any of this better myself. As a matter of fact, that was so good. I'm going to just probably go ahead and end on this. Please, again, like, share, subscribe. Talk to us in the comments. Let us know how you feel about this. Do you have anything to add if you're married or even if you're not married? I feel like everybody has been in relationships and these things can, can lend themselves to any type of relationship. It doesn't have to be a marriage. Um, any type of relationship and any any position where you're making decisions. You have a lot of families that are making decisions about the passing of a loved one or making a decision about moving or um, you got friendships where we're making a decision about where to go on the next girl's uh, trip or whatever else. That's This stuff can lend itself to anything, um, especially when, when you're dealing in relationships with people that you love. I'll say it like that. So um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, drop down in the comments talk to us and also to hit the notification bell. We're, we're posting stuff weekly and we want to hear from you. So thanks so much. Talk to you later.